Hi, I'm Susie Olchek. I'm a sculptor and I'm an artist educator at the Fitzwilliam Museum. Some of you might have already met me, um, and so if you have, hello again. And I'm looking forward to doing this workshop with you online. And uh, if you haven't met me, I hope to meet you in the future once the museum's open again. Today we're going to be doing a workshop about um, using recycled materials to create sculptures that are assemblages. I'm going to explain what an assemblage is in the next slide and then show you some examples for some inspiration. So let's get going. So just as we would normally do in the museum, we're going to start the workshop by going around and looking and taking inspiration from what we can see in the collection. In the museum, when we're doing it in real life, we would normally take a sketchbook and or a clipboard and some paper and a pencil to draw. So I encourage you now at home next to your computer, you could get some paper and you could draw some of the things that you see as we go for our virtual tour around the museum. You can pause this video at any time and do some sketching and then you can restart it when you're ready. So let's go inside and we'll go down to the different rooms around the museum and start to look around and draw from what you see. So one of the benefits of doing our walk around virtually is that I can take you through some of the exhibitions that happened in the past, as well as looking at some of the things that we could currently find if we were in the museum collection now. So this first slide is um, from the exhibition, the temporary exhibition called China's White Gold. And it was an exhibition in 2013. And I've included it because if you look on the right hand side of the, the image, it's interesting how the ceramics have been stacked up. So they've got like lots of rep repetition of form and stacked in, a, in an interesting way. And also the way that the um, fabric piece in the middle has been hung. So often when we're when we're talking about sculpture, a lot of the decisions that we make are around how we display that sculpture to maximise on its effect. Also, you might like to take inspiration for the way some of these ceramic pieces have been painted, the gestural brushstrokes on top of the ceramics. If you choose later on to decorate your works with paint, you could maybe take inspiration from this. These works by Ben Nicholson are really exciting sculptures as they take the same idea of simple geometric forms into a three-dimensional sculpture that emphasises the volume and form within it. And in the next work, we see similar ideas, but in a, in a relief sculpture with very little depth. It shows us that we can think of sculpture in various degrees of depth, and sometimes sculptures can be only a little bit more voluminous than the 2D work. It is interesting that they are both white. Perhaps you could take inspiration from this and only use one colour in your work later. Some of my favourite rooms in the museum are the um, Egyptian and the Greek and Roman rooms. I'm always really fascinated by the way that a lot of the sculpture over time has become fragmented. And also I often get really inspired by looking at the different ways in which the objects have been displayed. Like often they're propped up by specially designed um, supports and displayed in a way that you can see the forms from all the way round.
This next piece is from the exhibition called Egypt, Death of the Nile. And it was an exhibition that showed different Egyptian coffins. This is a Shabti box and it's for a priest and his wife. And the box has two separate compartments for the couple's shabtis. A shabti is a generally mummiform figurine of about 5 to 30 centimetres found in many ancient Egyptian tombs. The meaning of the Egyptian term is still debated, however, one possible translation is answerer, as they are believed to answer their master's call to work in the afterlife. You might like to think if your sculptures could have any additional messages or perhaps some symbolism, something that you're trying to convey to get across to the audience that maybe isn't so obvious at first. You could maybe suggest this in the title of what you call your work or you could have some secret hidden meaning or messages inside. I've chosen to take inspiration for this workshop from the African headrests in the museum because of their purity of forms and simple and elegant geometry. The main use of the headdress in East Africa was to support and therefore protect the characteristically elaborate headdresses and hairstyles. Headdress were used in Egypt in daily life as seen in model houses, but most of the surviving examples were found in graves and tombs. The type and material depended on the status of the deceased. Rulers, such as Tutankhamun, were buried with ornate and elaborate examples. During the Old Kingdom, headdresses were made of calcite, limestone and pottery, in addition to wood. Headdresses survive from ancient Egypt and Sudan because they are believed important in the afterlife, and so were placed in tombs and graves to protect and to serve the deceased. We're going to pop back outside um, quickly just to have a quick look uh, virtually at the sculpture promenade that the Fitzwilliam has quite regularly on the front lawn of the museum. Up until very recently, there was this Henry Moore piece there. It's a huge bronze sculpture. Like most successful sculptures, it's interesting from many different angles. And it's also very successful in the way that it captures the and kind of frames the positive and negative space. So as you're looking round, you'll see the way that it kind of becomes like a viewfinder. I've also included a few other pieces from the sculpt different sculpture promenades throughout time. And um hopefully you can see and get inspiration from the way that they construct um, using These geometric forms. These sculptures by Peter Randall Page are inspired by nature. However, in relation to the workshop we're going to be doing later when we're making, it's interesting to think of them in relation to packaging as well. So, for example, the bubble wrap I'll be showing you that you could possibly use to make sculptures later or also the packaging that eggs come in, the egg boxes. I also thought it might be nice to quickly have a look at some contemporary artists who make work using found objects and consider the idea of assemblages. Local to Cambridge artist David Kefford goes out on walks quite regularly and he then collects things that he picks up off the floor that have been dropped by other people and he uses those to make really, really small assemblages. Tony Cragg uses objects um, like recycled materials, like things like plastic bottles and plates, and he colours them in interesting ways so that they become these big installations. So like we were talking earlier about possibly just using white, 
you might also want to incorporate a lot of colour into your work. And finally, Jason Regenis uses polystyrene packaging, like what you might find um, if you get a new TV inside the box to create large scale installations um, and sculptures. I've also included some of my own work um, just to show you. Increasingly in the studio, I've been using found um, materials like um, packaging materials like bubble wrap and polystyrene to make my work. And increasingly, I also have a practice where I, I make a sculpture and I photograph it. And then because I use tape quite a lot, which is what you're going to be using today, I had the possibility to remake it into a different sculpture. So I'm constantly making, photographing, and then remaking into new sculptures again and again and again. And I use those materials for quite a long time. And I try to use my materials as for as long as possible and also to use things like the packaging material because that means I'm not wasting any materials. I've also been trying to see the lockdown as a little bit of an interesting creative challenge. I'm away from my studio and I'm working from home, so I don't have the tools I would normally have or the materials I would normally have. So I'm thinking about ways in which I can use materials that are really easily accessible to me. So things like packaging and also um, clean recycling that I'm collecting um, from the household can be really interesting source material. Um, so instead of buying raw materials, I'm, I'm collecting and gathering and then seeing what I can make from them. So just to recap, we're going to be using clean recycling that you can gather from around the house. It might take you a little while to gather it all, but if you start collecting now, I'm sure in a week or so you'll have lots of materials you can be using. So things like um, tin cans, um, just be careful with the tin cans because the edges at the bottom can sometimes be a little bit sharp. So try not to touch the open edge. Um, you could also find things like empty bottles, any packaging from cereal or um, other food um, and also jars as well. So try and collect all that. You'll also need some scissors. Um, you can get some tape. Colour tape's really great if you've got it, but if not, you can just use sellotape or masking tape. Um, if you want to decorate, you can get some Pritt stick and you can decorate using Pritt stick and um, paper, coloured paper. You might also use, use things from magazines and cutouts. Um, and if you've got any packaging, any bubble wrap left over from anything or any packaging from anything new that's arrived relatively recently, you can use that too. Um, it's up to you for decoration. You can just use the paper or you might like to add some paint as well if you've got any. Acrylic paint's great. Just be careful with acrylic paint because it doesn't come off your clothes. So make sure to put an apron or an old shirt or something on before you start. And we'll start making. So you can do things like stack your materials. You can try them in different configurations. You can tape them on. And then if you don't like it, you can untape it and retape it somewhere else. You can cut the cardboard if you've managed to collect any, any cardboard packaging into different forms. Um, and just keep trying out different forms and different sculptures until you're happy.
you could also try photographing your work from different all the, all the different angles think back to the Henry Moore that we looked at and when we were talking about the fact that a good sculptor should work from different angles you could photograph some of the details or you could also use um, a video function if you've got one on your phone or your camera to pan along the sculpture so people can see um, and you can record it from many different perspectives. So that's all for today. I hope you've enjoyed the workshop and I'm looking forward to um, seeing you back in the Fitzwilliam very soon. Thanks so much.